Yeah, okay. So, uh, let us continue with our discussion. So, last time uh, we saw um, how the universal covering of a Riemann surface is actually a covering in the holomorphic <coughs> sense. Okay. So, I just want to uh, make uh, uh, another remark in this direction. So, start with uh, so let us start with uh, 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 start with the covering to just a topological covering. Uh, let me say uh, universal covering. Uh, which we have already constructed all right um, for uh, for a given topological space okay then um, well you know that uh, 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 if i take this point x then i have this uh, uh, point x tilde above which in our construction corresponded to the uh, constant path at x okay uh, so the way we constructed this uh, universal covering was to consider path starting at x and mod out by fixed end point homotopy class by fixed end point homotopy as the equivalence relation okay. And uh, in particular uh, the points above x are just loops at x homotopy classes of loops at x and uh, uh, therefore the fiber over x was just the fundamental group of capital X based at small x. But in fact we had more in fact what we had was that the fundamental group uh, of x based at x uh, is identified uh, by an isomorphism of groups with the deck transformation group of this covering okay and uh, this deck transformation group was a subgroup of the group of uh, automorphisms homeomorphisms self homeomorphisms of the universal cover okay. So, uh, in fact if you uh, if you remember um, the way we did this was we defined the map uh, alpha uh, uh, suppose I take an element alpha which is a loop based at x and took its homotopy class which gives me an element here then I just sent this to the map phi sub alpha okay and uh, this map was uh, the map from x sub unit to itself which was which would send uh, given any point uh, beta uh, I would simply send it to alpha beta. So, uh, what it, what this diagrammatically means uh, is that uh, uh, give me a give me a, uh, uh, give me a loop uh, uh, give me a path starting at uh, so uh, so let me recall that so that it's easier for you uh, so here is x and here is my element alpha and uh, there is this path beta and this above this end point beta of 1 uh, is where the point b, uh, given by beta lies. So, this point is mapped to this by p okay and the uh, where does beta go to under this it goes to again to a path starting from uh, small x and that is just alpha followed by beta okay and we check that this is an isomorphism of groups all right. Uh, and that is how the fundamental group of the base uh, was identified with deck transformations and let me remind you that the deck transformations are all homeomorphisms of the uh, uh, universal covering into itself okay which respect the projection okay which means they will uh, they are all homeomorphisms which will act along the fiber direction okay a, a point will under a deck transformation will go to another point which lies in the same fiber as the original point. So, the deck transformation group is acting in the vertical direction okay. So, uh, well we have this now what I want to tell you is that uh, uh, I want to kind of uh, uh, 
give a converse to this uh, in the following sense. So what I want to say is uh, suppose I start with uh, uh, suppose I start with this uh, universal covering okay and well I look at the universal covering mod uh, the deck transformation group let me call this as G okay. So if I go mod G okay so, uh, so what does this notation mean? So what I do is you see G uh, is a group okay and it acts on this uh, topological space universal covering okay and therefore uh, this uh, space is broken down into orbits okay. So you have uh, an equivalence relation on uh, X sub unif okay. So let me write that down uh, uh, X so uh, on X sub unit have the equivalence relation relation. <coughs> let me call that tilde sub g uh, which is uh, let me say x1 tilde is uh, uh, equivalent to x2 tilde if and only if there exists an element phi in g such that phi takes x1 to tilde to x2 tilde okay. So this is this is just the uh, uh, two elements here are uh, considered to be uh, e equivalent to one another if there is a group element namely a deck transformation which moves this to the other okay and uh, the point is that uh, uh, this is just saying that uh, 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 this is just trying to break down uh, this space into orbits under the group okay. So I am just saying that uh, uh, clearly x1 tilde is equivalent to g under x2 tilde if and only if the orbit orbit of x1 tilde is the same as that of x2 tilde. So what does that mean? That means orbit of x1 tilde is just g dot x1 tilde okay and this should be the same as g dot x2 tilde which is the by definition the orbit of x2 tilde okay and you know what g dot x1 tilde means it means you apply every element of g to x1 tilde and uh, collect all these elements together that is the orbit okay. So, uh, and what does this mean? This is just the set of orbits. This is precisely the set of orbits, which is the same as the set of equivalence classes under that equivalence relation. So, x sub unit mod g is just is by definition, okay. Uh, this is equal to a set of orbits that is equal to just the set of equivalence classes. classes under that equivalence relation okay it is one and the same thing all right. Now uh, what I want you to understand is uh, so uh, so what is this map this is the uh, let me call this as uh, uh, a pi okay this is the very natural map which just sends any uh, x prime tilde is just mapped to orbit of x prime tilde okay which is in other words it is mapped to the equivalence class that it belongs to right. So this is your map all right and it is very clear that this map is surjective by definition because it is just the collection of orbits all right. So pi is surjective is surjective which is uh, which is obvious okay and then uh, now what I can do is that since the the set on top is a topological space i can put the quotient topology for this for this set below 
okay. So endow this with the quotient topology okay. So which means that you know uh, you put in uh, the minimal number of uh, collection of open sets that makes this map continuous okay. So in other words a set here is open if and only if its inverse image here is open right. So endo endo uh, this set x unit mod g with uh, the quotient topology. Into it with the quotient topology, then uh, pi also becomes a continuous map, okay? Because by definition, if I take an open set here, I have to check that the inverse image of that set is continuous. But that's how an open set below is defined. So this automatically makes uh, pi into pi into a continuous map. So uh, pi uh, becomes a continuous map. okay pi becomes a continuous map then uh, i would like to uh, look at these orbits okay and uh, the point i want to make is that you see if you move uh, the the equivalence relation moves an element to another element by a deck transformation okay but a deck transformation is to move is supposed to move elements only along the fiber okay which, which means all the uh, elements which are equivalent to an given element namely the orbit of a given element has to be only in the fiber over p okay so uh, since since uh, since deck transformations act along the fibers of p of p okay each orbit uh, is inside a fiber of p okay each orbit has to lie in a fiber okay and fiber of uh, which point you take the point whose orbit you are taking take its image below and take the fiber over that point okay it is lying in that fiber right. So, so I can just say that orbit of x prime tilde is going to be a subset of p inverse of p of x prime tilde it is going to be in that fiber alright fine. Now, uh, the next thing I want to say is that the orbit uh, is the whole fiber okay the orbit I want to say is the whole fiber. So uh, uh, fact is that orbit of x prime tilde is actually equal to p inverse of p of x prime tilde all right and uh, uh, I mean this should be uh, this should be familiar to you if you remember that uh, I told you that the fundamental group below uh, at each point will act transitively on the fiber over that point okay I, I made that <coughs> remark in an earlier lecture but even otherwise it is very very easy to see. So what is happening is uh, you have uh, so if you want you see I have I have my uh, uh, x all right and suppose uh, uh, I take a point x prime tilde all right then this point is uh, going to be by definition uh, it is going to be by definition a path uh, beta all right because that is what is an element uh, in the uh, uh, universal covering space the way we have constructed it okay and this is going to be a path like this. So it is going to end at a point and this point is a point to which this is going to be mapped under P okay. So this is how my uh, diagram looks like and uh, see you you know if you give me um, um, 
and how is it that uh, the uh, 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 the deck transformation is defined it is defined in the following way uh, so if i if i start with uh, if i start with an element uh, alpha here as i this is exactly as i written it there uh, then you see my point to which uh, the deck transformation defined by alpha which is phi sub alpha okay it maps uh, all it maps beta to alpha beta okay this is how my deck transformation uh, is defined all right and uh, notice that uh, so so this is how it is defined now i want to say that the orbit is everything okay so what i am saying is let us take another point uh, let us say x uh, double prime tilde okay and then uh, let me call this as uh, less let, let, let me let me call this as gamma okay all right my claim is that uh, there is uh, there is a deck transformation that will take uh, uh, x prime to x double prime tilde okay and what is it you can you can guess uh, i'll just have to apply i uh, i'll just have to take the point alpha inverse gamma okay so you can see that phi uh, sub uh, alpha will take uh, uh, alpha inverse gamma uh, uh, so phi sub alpha will take alpha inverse gamma but i want i want beta to uh, okay let me write this down it will take alpha inverse gamma to gamma that's not a, what i want i want beta to go to gamma okay so um, essentially what I need to do is uh, so in fact I am searching for a suitable alpha all right I am searching for a suitable alpha such that uh, that will take so uh, want want an alpha such that phi sub alpha takes uh, beta to gamma the moment i get such an alpha then this is a deck transformation that will move the point beta to the point gamma this is what i want all right so if you write it down what it will tell you is uh, that this gamma has to be uh, alpha in uh, it has to be alpha beta okay by definition because phi alpha takes beta to alpha beta okay so you can solve for uh, alpha from this so you will find that alpha is just alpha beta is homotopic to gamma so you will get uh, uh, alpha is homotopic to gamma beta inverse okay so i will just have to take so you see this gamma is uh, uh, mind you gamma is some another some other path in x okay which also ends at the same point as beta ends because both of them are points above this end point okay so gamma followed by beta inverse is a loop based at x and if i take that loop as alpha uh, then that phi sub alpha the corresponding deck transformation will move beta to gamma okay so it is very clear therefore that uh, uh, so in other words if i want to move from here to here okay then what i have to use is phi sub uh, gamma beta inverse okay this will do the job okay so what i have proved is give me uh, any other point x double prime tilde i can move x prime tilde to x double prime tilde by a deck transformation which means that the orbit will contain all the points in the fiber so that establishes this okay so so if you now go back to this diagram if i go back to this diagram uh, and suppose i put also this original covering into the picture okay then what you see is that uh, i also have 
I can also define a map like this <coughs> okay I can define a map like this namely I will take uh, and the orbit of a certain x prime tilde and I will send it to p of x prime tilde x prime tilde okay and you can see that this uh, this is a bijective map okay. So, in other words uh, uh, this set uh, over this set is just the orbits okay this set here is just the orbits okay but the orbits are precisely the fibers all right and therefore uh, you are this set is just the fi uh, this set is just taking all these fibers here and thinking of each fiber as a point okay so you get a map like this and this this map is bijective you can easily see and you can also see that uh, you know you can see that this uh, this pi will be actually an open map okay pi will be an open map and the, and why is that so uh, so let me write pi is an open map that is uh, very very easy because you see you know if I take an open set uh, here all right uh, then um, uh, suppose I call it call it as u tilde okay if u tilde in x sub unit is open okay then I have to check that uh, pi of u tilde is open to say that pi is an open map I have to say it takes open sets to open sets. So uh, I have to check pi of u tilde is open but then because of the quotient topology this is the same as trying to check that pi inverse of pi of u tilde is open okay. So, what is pi inverse of pi of u tilde okay pi inverse of pi of u tilde is simply g dot u tilde okay see you uh, when you take the inverse image uh, of a point here okay you get the whole orbit okay if you take if you take a set above okay and you go down and then you take the inverse image you are only taking all possible translates of that set by elements of g okay because look at what is happening point wise you take a point here all right you go down you take its image that will be the orbit of that point if you take the inverse image you will get the full orbit of that point and what is the orbit of the point it is the uh, translate of that point by the whole group g which is the direct transformation group they say what happens to a point also happens to a set if I take a set here. I push it down and then if I take it back I will simply get get g dot that set which means all translates of that set okay. So, this is just all translates of u tilde okay but these are all translates of u tilde by elements of g and which are which are anyway homeomorphisms okay. So, this is a union of open sets so it is open okay. So, this is see this is just equal to union g belonging to g uh, if you want let me call this as phi belonging to g p of u tilde okay this is what this is and you see each phi uh, is a deck transformation so it is a homeomorphism of the universal covering so phi of u tilde will be an open set isomorphic to u tilde and this is the union of such open sets and therefore this is open so this calculation will tell you that uh, uh, pi of u tilde is open Okay, so, this will tell you that pi of u tilde is open okay. Now, let us go back to this diagram let us go back to this diagram this is an open surjective map okay and of course, this is of, co of course an open surjective map because it is a covering map and this map here is bijective okay and it is actually a homeomorphism why because you see uh, it is bijective. Uh, why is it continuous if you take an open set here you pull it back I will get an open set and then if I take the image here I will get an open set because this is open. So, the inverse image of an open set is open so it is continuous and I can also argue the other way around if I take uh, this map will also be an open map 
because if I take an open set here, I take its inverse image that will be an open set and then if I take the image this is an open map, so its image is open, so this is an open continuous bijective map, so it is a homeomorphism. Therefore, in, in other words this is none other than that, okay. this is none other than that, they are homeomorphic alright and under this homeomorphism you can identify p and pi, if you identify uh, every point below with the orbit above as a set, okay, then these two can be identified okay. and this p is just the natural uh, map sending an element to its orbit okay. and uh, what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is therefore, that you if you have a universal covering then x can be written as x universal modulo deck transformation group okay. So, uh, so let me write that down, so, uh, so let me write this, let me write this here, uh, this is a homeomorphism and uh, this diagram commutes that is this followed by this is this and this followed by its inverse is that okay <coughs> and x is therefore, uh, identified by this homeomorphism with uh, x universe the, the universal cover modulo the deck transformation group okay. So, <coughs> the reason why I am doing this is the following I am just trying to tell you is that uh, uh, what I am trying to tell you is that if you take this universal covering okay uh, the not only is the fundamental group below identified as a subgroup of automorphisms above, but the top space modulo that subgroup of automorphisms which is actually the fundamental group below is actually the space below, this is actually a quotient of that by the deck transformation group by the fundamental group okay. So, this is so I can also write it as x universal u x universal mod pi 1 pi 1 of x comma x. I can also write it like this, because after all the deck transformation group is isomorphic to uh, the fundamental group. So, you must always remember this when you have a universal covering the, the fundamental group below is a subgroup of the automorphism group above and that space above modulo the fundamental group thought of as going modulo deck transformation group will give you exactly the space below and this, this covering projection is actually the map that sends every element to its orbit that is all okay. So, that is how you should think of it alright okay. Now, let me add uh, uh, so all this is in the topological category, but now assume that x is a Riemann surface okay. Then I have told you already that this uh, cover universal covering gets uh, canonically a Riemann surface structure a unique Riemann surface structure such that p becomes a holomorphic map. Okay. So, what happens is that the Riemann surface structure can be transported from here to there, okay. but then because this pi is after all p which is a local homeomorphism okay, after this identification, I can again take this Riemann surface structure and push it below. Okay. So, I will get a Riemann surface structure here and that Riemann surface structure is nothing but this Riemann surface structure more borrowed by this homeomorphism. Okay. So, uh, whatever I have said will also work in the holomorphic category. If x is a Riemann surface and x universal is the universal cover of the Riemann surface which gets a unique Riemann surface structure, then not only is the fundamental group below identified as a subgroup of the holomorphic automorphisms of the universal cover, namely the deck transformation groups are now uh, holomorphic uh, uh, maps, holomorphic automorphisms, but if you take this Riemann surface above and go modulo the fundamental group below which is now thought of as holomorphic automorphisms a subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms the quotient you get is again the same Riemann surface okay you get back the same Riemann surface okay and everything is uh, valid in the holomorphic category okay. So, this is something that I want you to bear in mind okay. So, let us proceed okay. So, um, what am I going what am I going to do next um, I am to be to we, we need to start applying all this uh, theory to get hold of uh, you know the first classification of Riemann surfaces. So, let us first look at Riemann surfaces which admit the 
uh, the Riemann sphere as a universal cover. Okay, so as even as a cover. So uh, let X be a Riemann surface uh, with uni with with covering with covering P one C, which is just C union infinity, uh, which is uh, which is a Riemann sphere. So if you remember uh, P1C, uh, uh, P1C being the Riemann sphere uh, is the same as uh, the one point compactification of the complex plane by the stereographic projection and uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, we made this into a Riemann surface in one of our earlier examples and uh, that, uh, that gives us the uh, Riemann surface given by the Riemann sphere. Okay. So, suppose x is a <coughs> Riemann surface with covering this, so I have the following situation, so here is a universal, so I have x tilde to x, I have a covering and I know this, this that this is P1C, okay. of course I can write isomorphism up to isomorphism but I, but I do not worry about that because if there, if, the, if, it is, if there is an isomorphism I will just compose and that will also be a covering map. So now notice that P1 is a Riemann surface structure on the uh, two sphere which is simply connected therefore this has to be the universal cover okay. So this has to be X sub unit up to isomorphism because I told you that uh, uh, any cover uh, you take any covering with the covering the space above being simply connected then it, 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 uh, it has to be the universal covering and then you give any two universal coverings they are unique up to a unique isomorphism and that isomorphism is uh, fixed if you fix a point here and its image there alright. So, uh, so this is a universal covering, so my situation is that I, 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 I am just having uh, P1C to X by this projection and this is a universal covering. Right. Now, uh, what what do we know? We know that you see, if I fix a point x here, okay, and if I fix a point x tilde above, okay, then uh, uh, I don't need to fix a point above. Basically, uh, we know that the fundamental group of capital X small x is identified to the deck transformation group of this cover. this is what we have seen and uh, this is subgroup this is a subgroup of the automorphisms now holomorphic automorphisms of p1 c okay so the deck transformation group is now a subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms of the universal cover okay and what are the holomorphic automorphisms of the universal cover uh, you know that this is just the full group of Mobius transformations okay which is given by P S L 2 C okay. So uh, every every uh, automorphism of the extended complex plane okay every holomorphic automorphism of the extended complex plane has to be a Mobius transformation okay uh, and uh, if you write the Mobius transformation as Z going to A Z plus B by C Z plus D then you get this matrix A B C D okay and then you normalize this matrix by requiring that AD minus BC is equal to 1 and then of course you have to go mod sign and therefore you get this identification all right. Now, now I want you to uh, understand the following thing see the first statement I want to make is <coughs> a, a deck transformation um, uh, 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 so I want to say two deck transformations if they are same if they agree at one point then they are the same everywhere okay. So let me make that statement observation if two deck transformations agree at a point they are the same. Okay. 
why is this true this is because uh, they are both lifts of the projection of the covering projection they are all lift and you know there is a unique lifting property so what is happening is that i have x sub u nil okay and here is my x and here is my covering uh, projection and uh, i write that again here okay and suppose i have phi 1 and phi 2 are two uh, deck deck transformations which are you know uh, automorphisms from the universal covering to itself okay then both of them are lifts of p phi 1 followed by p is also p phi 2 followed by p is also p i mean that is exactly the statement which says that uh, the deck transformations move points along the fiber okay so that is how the deck transformation group is defined all right that is how deck tra transformations are defined so it means this followed by this is this but then i told you that uh, a covering space a covering map has a unique lifting property okay that is if you have a lifting if you have two liftings if they agree at a point then they agree everywhere okay so uh, what this will tell you is that unique unique lifting property property of p will imply that if phi 1 of x tilde is equal to phi 2 of x tilde for some you know x tilde in the universal cover then phi 1 is equal to phi 2 okay. So, this is just the uniqueness uh, of lifting that I am using here okay. So, if two deck transformations agree at a point they, they are they are the same. So, what I want to tell you is that uh, uh, I want to say that from this I want to deduce that no deck transformation can have a fixed point okay. No non trivial deck transformation can have a fixed point why because if, if a deck transformation has a fixed point then it agrees with the identity map which is the which is also a deck transformation at that point. So, it has to be identity everywhere by this okay. So, the upshot of this is no deck transformation different from the identity has a fixed point all right. So, let me write that down no deck transformation other than the identity map. can have a fixed point okay. no deck transformation other than the identity map can have a fixed point okay. Now, uh, so uh, you see pi 1 x the fundamental group uh, in fact I should in fact I should write isomorphic to this is not this is not a sub okay. I am sorry please correct it this should be isomorphic to and this is sub here you see therefore what we are looking at are uh, mobius transformations okay different from the identity and which have uh, uh, no fixed points if you are looking at non trivial elements here a non trivial element here corresponds to a mobius transformation all right it, it corresponds to a mobius transformation which has no fixed point okay and such a mobius transformation cannot exist okay so the conclusion is that this is the trivial group okay so uh, uh, so a yeah, non uh, uh, an element of a deck p1 c to x p has to be uh, other than uh, other than the identity has to be a mobius transformation uh, which has no fixed points.
okay but there is there is no such transformation there is no no such transformation okay why because you see a mobius transformation looks like z going to a z plus b by c z plus d okay now you see if uh, if i try to solve for fixed points then you know i'll get i'm i'm uh, i'm i'm just solving a z plus b by c z plus d is equal to z i'm just solving this equation all right and this amounts to solving a z plus b is equal to c z squared plus d z so what i get is well i get um, uh, c z squared plus d minus a times z minus b equal to 0 is equal to 0 okay now notice that this is a quadratic equation see if c is 0 this is not a quadratic equation if c is 0 this is not a quadratic equation and uh, 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 if if uh, you see if c is 0 and a is not equal to d all right then i get a fixed point okay and uh, if c is not 0 i have two solutions to the quadratic equation which will give me fixed points okay so the moral of the story is that uh, i will at least get uh, i will get a fixed point if it is not the trivial transformation if it is not the identity transformation okay so this will tell you that uh, there is no element of the deck transformation group other than the identity okay there is no element of the deck transformation group other than the identity in fact what i want to say is that if c is zero if you are wondering for a moment if c is zero then infinity becomes a fixed point mind you we are looking at uh, the point at infinity also as a point it is also a point here the Riemann sphere okay if c is zero if c is equal to 0 infinity is a fixed point if c is not 0 you get two fixed points of course the two points may be the same you count them up to multiplicity all right so the moral of the story is that uh, you cannot have uh, any non trivial elements in this deck transformation group that means this is a trivial group and that means the fundamental group of x is trivial okay if the fundamental group of x is trivial then x is itself simply connected and the identity map from x to x itself is a universal covering because the identity map of a space into itself satisfies all the properties of a cover of a covering and if the space is simply connected that also is a universal covering and i told you the universal covering uh, uh, the universal coverings are all isomorphic therefore what this will tell you is that you see <coughs> it will tell you that this map p x has to be identified with x must be the same up to holomorphic isomorphism as a riemann sphere okay and this map p will just have to be an automorphism of the riemann sphere and therefore it has to be an element of psl2c okay so this discussion tells you that any riemann surface which has p1 as the universal cover has to be isomorphic to p1 itself and nothing more okay so let me write that down uh, so so let me write right right here uh, so let me add here but no such can exist and this is the uh, so what this implies is that pi 1 x comma x uh, is equal to the deck transformation group of p 1 c p x trivial group namely it consists of only the identity element okay and this implies x is simply connected okay but this implies that x to x identity map is a universal cover okay and that will imply that x has to be isomorphic to p1 okay and uh, once you make this identification of x with p1 this map p 
has to be just an automorphism of P1, so it has to be just an element of PSL2C, okay, and okay. So this is the proof of a theorem that I stated earlier, that any Riemann surface which has P1 as a covering has to be just simply P1 itself, so you don't get anything more, right? Okay, so um, let me go to the next case, namely I am going to look at uh, uh, Riemann surfaces which have universal cover uh, the complex plane okay. So you know the universal cover for a Riemann surface has to be a simply connected Riemann surface and the fundamental uniformization theorem tells you that there are only three such namely a simply connected Riemann surface is either the Riemann sphere or it is a whole complex plane or it is a unit disc which is the same as the upper half plane alright. So I have covered the first case uh, when the universal cover is the Riemann sphere. Now I am going to look at the case when the universal cover is the uh, complex plane okay, so let us go to that. So next we will look at this uh, let x be a Riemann surface with universal covering C okay, so I am going to next look, next look at Riemann surfaces with universal covering the complex plane right. So, uh, so the situation is like this you have x sub unit is C and this is the covering map and here is my x okay. Again we have uh, uh, if I fix a point x below uh, in small x in capital X then we have again an identification uh, of uh, the fundamental group of x space at x uh, with the deck transformation group of this covering which is C to x okay and this is uh, this is a sub of uh, the holomorphic automorphisms of C which is the space above okay. Now the holomorphic automorphisms of C are uh, if you check uh, they are going to be again Mobius transformations so one writes them as P delta 2 comma C okay and uh, uh, these uh, Mobius transformations are precisely all those uh, uh, writable in this form A B um, let me say 1 uh, 0 uh, C so A B C D such that uh, A D equal to uh, 1 and modulo plus or minus the identity matrix. See a general Mobius transformation is written as A z plus B by C z plus D and it is identified with the matrix A B C D okay and the condition you put is A D minus B C is equal to 1 if you take a general Mobius transformation alright. Uh, but here uh, uh, I want automorphisms of C and the automorphisms of C will have this uh, uh, you know upper triangular form. So you know if it is an automorphism of C infinity has to be fixed <coughs> alright therefore I cannot have this C term here alright. So I have this upper triangular form. Now uh, as I have already pointed out if C is 0 then infinity uh, infinity is a fixed point and that is exactly what happens alright. Now uh, uh, what are these uh, let us look at all these uh, Mobius transformations see uh, if you take an element from here it is going to look like z going to uh, well a z plus b by uh, d okay and well I can as well write it as uh, you know um, uh, uh, a by d z plus b by d okay I can write it like this because uh, I can just divide throughout by d and again as I explained here. Uh, if you look at that observation that uh, a deck transformation has to be uh, a deck transformation different from the identity has to be one that has no fixed points okay. So if you put that uh, condition here you will see that this coefficient has to become one okay. So, uh, so let me write that down. Um, 
So, if if phi is a deck transformation and uh, phi takes z to this okay. So, you see uh, phi of z is just a z plus b by d all right and uh, the, the the condition on phi is that it should not have any fixed point okay phi should not phi should not have any fixed point okay so uh, that will happen uh, only when uh, um, the coefficient of z is 1 right I think uh, uh, that is that is quite obvious I think. Um, so, um, how do I write that down um, I just have to say that uh, 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 so you see uh, so uh, a equal to d okay why because because if a is not equal to d I can get a fixed point uh, z is equal to minus of b by uh, uh, so I am just solving a z plus b by d is equal to z all right. So I will get a z plus b is equal to d z all right so I will get z d z into a minus d equal to minus b so I will get z is equal to minus b by a minus d. So this will is a fixed point okay. So, uh, yeah, a z plus b uh, is equal to d z right. So, a has to be equal to d and uh, but a d is 1. So, that means a squared uh, has to be 1. So, a has to be plus or minus 1, but I am going modulo plus or minus identity for the sign. So, I can take a is equal to 1. So, the upshot of all this is that this deck transformation group, the deck transformation group. Uh, uh, can be simply identified with matrices of this form uh, 1 0 1 uh, a uh, if I use b let me continue using b such that b is a complex number okay. So, the deck transformation group can be identified in this form right and what are these maps these are just translations these maps these are just the set of all t sub b which is the map that sent z to z plus b uh, where b is a complex number okay. You see the, the, the when a is equal to d equal to 1 this map just becomes z going to z plus b which is translation by b. So, the deck transformation group <coughs> is uh, 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 I should say is, is identified with uh, a subgroup of okay I should be careful the deck transformation group is identified with a subgroup of this okay which is of this form I, I cannot say that everything is here right but it is a subgroup of this right and mind you this can be so this uh, this group of translations uh, if you look at it as a group under composition can be identified with simply with the complex numbers as a group under addition okay. So, this last group is just isomorphic to the complex numbers by just sending t sub b to b okay and you know if you compose t sub b 1 and t sub b 2 it will be translation by b 1 plus b 2 and the, the composition will go to b 1 plus b 2. So, this is a group home of some. So, the moral of the story is that the deck transformation group which is isomorphic to the fundamental group becomes uh, as a group first of all it becomes abelian okay first of all it becomes abelian because it is a subgroup of this group of uh, uh, th this group is a group is the group of translations that is abelian. So, the first thing that you infer is that the fundamental group has to be abelian okay 
that information you get. Then the second thing is you also realize that the deck transformation group is an additive subgroup can be identified with an additive subgroup of the complex numbers under addition. Okay. So, let me write those remarks down thus pi 1 x comma x uh, is abelian. So, that is the inf information that you get and uh, is an additive subgroup subgroup of C ok, it is an additive subgroup of C. Now, uh, there is one more uh, part uh, to this <coughs> that one has to understand before we proceed and that is to understand what this uh, is topologically as a subset of C ok. So, what I am now going to tell you is that topologically as a subset of C it is uh, it is discrete it consists of only isolated points ok that is what I am going to say next all right. So, uh, claim uh, uh, so the subgroup is just uh, uh, an isolated set of points of C that is it is a discrete subset So, it is a discrete subset of C that means every point of that uh, subgroup if you identify it with the with the point with a point of C then it is isolated away from the other points ok and it is a discrete subset means there is no accumulation point to this set of points ok. So, in fact what I mean here is the sub the subset of point the this the subset of points given by the subgroup is actually a discrete subset. Uh, so, this is a very very important claim all right and uh, uh, one has to prove that um, and this is how one proves it. So, um, so let us let us uh, do deduct sure ad absurdum ok let us assume that this is not the case ok. Uh, suppose, suppose this uh, subset is not discrete suppose it is not discrete ok. That means, it will have an accumulation point ok, it will have an accumulation point and then you can pick a, a sequence of points here which are distinct points and which will converge to that accumulation point ok. Then it has an accumulation point So, there exists a sequence B n ok which tends to be <coughs> ok and uh, each B n is different from B n plus 1 ok and they are all different uh, for all n and uh, uh, of course, each B n is different from B. this is what accumulation point means ok. You have a sequence of distinct points which go to a limit which is also different from each one of these points ok. So, there is an accumulation point. So, what this means is that you see the uh, uh, so, this is going to create problems uh, because <coughs> and, and that is what is going to give us a contradiction. Now, you see my situation is uh, as follows I have C here. I have p, <coughs> I have, I have my x below, okay, and uh, let me draw a diagram. You see, suppose I fix a point small x <coughs> in capital X, okay. Then you know that this is a, this is a covering. So this point 
uh, will have an admissible neighborhood okay. So, suppose I take this admissible neighborhood u here okay then it is inverse image under P will be a disjoint union of open sets each of which is, is mapped by P homeomorphically onto x okay. So, in other words you know if I if I take a point x tilde here uh, so, since this is the complex plane I will take the, take the point as z okay uh, if you want I will take the point as let us say z naught okay. So, if I take a point z naught here then I will get uh, a neighborhood surrounding z naught which will be just uh, I can call this as if you want I will call this as u tilde okay and p restricted to u tilde from u tilde to u will be a homeomorphism okay that is because of the uh, covering property. Okay, property of a covering space. So, uh, uh, if x belongs to x, z in z not in C uh, uh, is mapped to x by P, u in uh, x an admissible neighborhood, neighborhood. <coughs> and uh, uh, u tilde <coughs> uh, a neighborhood of z naught with <coughs> uh, p restricted to u tilde from u tilde to u with u is just p of u tilde is a holomorphic isomorphism okay. So, all this happens because this is a covering space right. Now, you see uh, uh, see you take this neighborhood uh, uh, which contains z naught and apply the translation by b n okay apply translation by any b n okay all right. Then what will happen if if I apply translation by B n okay I will get another neighborhood at and this will now be an uh, a neighborhood at z naught plus B n. So, this will be you see uh, this point will be z naught plus B n okay and this uh, uh, this is actually action by the uh, deck transformation element which is given by translation by B n. Okay, and mind you translation by B n has been identified with the point B n in C all right. So, this is how translation by B n will act okay and notice that these two will be disjoint these two will be disjoint because translation by B n is anyway a holomorphic automorphism okay and the translation by B n is a deck transformation. So, it will only move along the fiber direction. So, it will move uh, one neighborhood like this into another okay and these two will be disjoint because both of them are inverse images of uh, under P of this u okay and you also have in the same way you also have uh, uh, translation by B. So, you know I have one more here this point is now going to be z naught plus B, B is uh, B is this B okay. So, I am using different notations for b let me write the same b here. So, this is z naught plus b and I will get another uh, neighborhood okay and so long as b is not 0 these two are different okay. But if b is 0 then these two will be the same but nevertheless these two are different in any case these two are always different because b n is not equal to b okay. Now, you see you have an inherent contradiction the contradiction is see b n tends to b therefore, uh, the distance between b n and b can be made as small as I want okay. That means, the distance between z naught plus b and z naught plus b n can be made as small as I want, but you see these two are disjoint. So, it is not possible to do that if I choose n sufficiently large I can make the distance between z naught plus b and z naught plus b n as small as I want okay and that is because I can make b n minus b as small as I want and that is because b n tends to b. But if I can make the distance between these two points as small as I want 
then these two have to intersect because they are all uh, in the complex plane okay but then they cannot intersect because they are all various sheets uh, over this admissible neighborhood okay they cannot intersect okay so this contradiction will tell you that uh, your assumption that there is an accumulation point is wrong okay so let me write that down so uh, the moral of the story therefore is that the uh, this uh, this this subset of points of c is actually a discrete subset okay so let me write that down here so uh, well so this is uh, so this this is translation by b and this is translation by b sub n So, so let me write that down. We have uh, uh, translation by B uh, of u tilde intersection translation by uh, B n of u tilde is always empty okay, because they are translation of B n by u tilde and translation of B by u tilde they are always going to be distinct because B n is not equal to B as B n is not equal to B. On the other hand, other hand, uh, B B n tends to B, so translation by B n of Z naught tends to translation by B of Z naught. Okay, and translation by B n of Z naught is going to belong to translation by B n of U tilde, and this guy is going to belong to translation by b of u tilde okay so this is uh, so these two sets have to intersect if if b n tends to b but that's not possible okay which is not possible uh, which uh, implies for n large uh, translation by b n of u tilde and translation of b by u tilde has to be non empty okay so this is a contradiction this contradiction the existence of an accumulation point okay so the claim is uh, therefore the claim is proved okay so uh, the sub so you know your fundamental group is abelian all right it is uh, identified with the subgroup of the additive group of the complex numbers that subgroup as a subset is discrete okay now there is one more point uh, which is the last point that i need to complete the analysis the last point is that not only is this the subgroup of c is actually a z module okay so that's an input from algebra okay so claim uh, the subgroup of uh, C uh, uh, given uh, by the image of uh, the deck transformation group uh, is a Z module. so this is the this is the next point right now so i sh i need to tell you what a module is okay so uh, a module is to a ring uh, what a vector space is to a field okay a module is to a ring as to uh, a vector as to what a vector space is to a field okay so uh, uh, so what is a vector space over a field uh, you have the vector space is basically an abelian group and they uh, then there is something called scalar multiplication that allows you to multiply elements of the field which are called as scalars with elements of the vector space okay and this behaves well with respect to addition and so on okay if you use the same rules you can define uh, the notion of a module over a ring okay 
and uh, the point is that this subgroup becomes a z module all right so you see uh, and it's also very very clear uh, uh, that's because you see i have to multiply i have to take an element of z namely an integer i have to multiply by an element of the subgroup and produce another element and that's very clear if i take an integer n and multiply by a translation it is just tran that translation by uh, n times okay if n is uh, positive uh, if it is uh, uh, the inverse translation n times uh, the inverse translation minus n times if n is negative and it is identity if the uh, if n is 0 okay that is a very obvious way of defining this so uh, let me write that down uh, so z cross uh, 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 the uh, so deck uh, c p uh, sorry this is not p this is x this is x to deck Uh, you can also look at it at in this way uh, you take an integer n and you take a deck transformation you know i just send it to phi to the power of n which is phi composed with phi composed with phi n times uh, if n is uh, uh, positive and i send it to identity if a, if n is zero okay and i send it to uh, phi inverse power minus n if n is negative okay and uh, uh, this is how it looks uh, this is how the deck transformation group becomes a z module and if you want to identify it with translations then you know uh, how it is going to be okay so um, fine so it is a z module all right so uh, for for the for convenience uh, let me do the following thing uh, uh, so let me uh, call the uh, uh, let me call this uh, subgroup uh, g uh, uh, let me call it something uh, d uh, or even let me call it as g okay let me call this as g all right then uh, namely what i'm saying is that the 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 image of this that so that is g here inside c it's an additive subgroup of c okay and this is uh, this is just the isomorphism of, of this just the image of this here okay and what i've shown here is first that the uh, g is an additive subgroup of c which is uh, as a subset is discrete and here i have g uh, is also a z module so the upshot is g is a discrete sub it's a discrete sub module z sub module of the additive subgroup of c <coughs> okay uh, module as a z module right okay now i'm going to use this so uh, before that let me write this i have z cross g to g if i write it in terms of g which is the image of this and under uh, uh, the isomorphism uh, the identification with of a translation with uh, the uh, uh, element by which you are translation by which you are translating then you know this is just going to be n comma if i take uh, b it is simply going to be n times b okay this is a natural uh, module structure and this b is to be thought of as translation by b this is translation by n times b okay so this is a this makes a g into a z module right now i am going to make another claim and this claim is uh, uh, very very important so here is a small uh, so maybe i can call it uh, lemma uh, uh, there are only three possibilities for a discrete z submodule g of c so my g is of course it is it is discrete as a subset of c and it's a z sub module right and there is this lemma which says there are only three possibilities number 1 g is just uh, zero okay so 
so this is trivial number 2 uh, so when I say G is trivial it means that it contains only translation by 0 which is just the identity so it contains only the identity map right then the second thing G is Z dot omega okay for uh, omega uh, which is a non zero complex number okay so G is just uh, integer multiplication int, um, it is just translation by integer multiples <coughs> of a fixed non zero complex number okay and the third one is G is translation by two uh, non zero complex numbers omega 1 and omega 2 uh, non zero complex numbers with omega 1 by omega 2 not a real number these are the only three possibilities okay these are the only three possibilities either g is just 0 or it is multiples integer multiples of a single non zero complex number or it is uh, linear integer combination integer linear combination of two non zero complex numbers with non real ratio okay and but you see this g is supposed to be the deck transformation group okay and that is pi 1 so you see what it means it means there are only three possibilities for pi 1 of x so pi 1 of x is either 0 okay or pi 1 of x is isomorphic to z or pi 1 of x is isomorphic to z cross z okay all right and you also know that uh, the the covering can uh, this space below can be written as this model of the deck transformation group okay so in the first case x is c mod 0 <coughs> which is just c the second case it is c modulo uh, uh, translates by s integer trans uh, translates by an in integer multiples of a zero uh, of a non zero complex number which you know will give you a Riemann surface uh, structure on a cylinder okay and the third one will give you a Riemann surface structure on a torus okay so if you prove uh, if one proves this lemma one gets this beautiful theorem that you know whenever the uh, a Riemann surface has universal covering c okay then the x has to be either uh, c itself which is the case when g is 0 or it has to be a cylinder with a complex structure that I have explained earlier or it has to be a complex torus with again with a complex structure that I had explained earlier. So, these are the only possibilities and in all the in a, and of course, these are all in all these cases the fundamental group is abelian okay. So, uh, I will I will I will try to prove this in my next lecture. I'll stop you.